Hi guys, so in the past I've had a few people asking me how to create a cinematic effect on their HD video or their normal video or whatever they've been shooting. So I've put it into Vegas, as a lot of people use Vegas and a lot of people have said, you know, it's good doing After Effects tutorials, but a lot of us don't have After Effects and obviously Sony Vegas is a more the, the more affordable platform that a lot of Windows users have. So let's get straight into this. First off, you want to check that your frame rate is the same as the video clip. So you can check this by going to properties on your video clip and going to media and it will tell you the frame rate of your clip. So this fr this clip is 25 frames per second. To make sure the project is the same, click on video project settings which is up here, which is a little arrow pointing on this little like menu kind of thing and change the frame rate to what's right and at the moment it's 25 so that's fine. So just press OK. And now what you want to do is you want to also click on properties again and you want to make sure that disable resample is checked. Smart resample can create ghosting and, and no one wants ghosting in their videos. So disable resample, yep, make sure that's checked. Next thing is creating those black bars. Now, this is really easily done. I have tons of presets, well not tons, a couple just set already. But if you want the Blu-ray resolution, Blu-ray resolution is 1920 by 800. Now, making sure that lock aspect ratio is told off, change the height to 800 and that's it, done, simple, that's how easy it is to change. Now to be quite honest, if your video itself has a good depth and the colours are good, you might even just want to keep it like that, but it's completely up to you. We're going to get now more into different kind of effects like adding levels, so I'm going to go on levels here which is on video effects and then click on darken and just drag that onto the clip. Now obviously I don't want it that dark, that doesn't look very effective, so turn down the input start. Just making sure though that it has still got those blacks. You can adjust the input end as well which will bring up the highlights, but you don't want it to be too overexposed. And really it's just about playing around with the video itself and playing around with all these little settings because everyone's video is going to be different. What I change the input start to won't be the same as what another video might adjust to obviously because of the darkness and the highlights are all different on different videos so I can't give you set you know set numbers of what to change it to because they'll all be different. But I think that looks good so we'll leave it at that and what you can do now is you can go to saturation adjust now I want to drag boost midtones onto the clip and what this enables you to do is adjust um, the saturation as much as you like see there you've taken out some of the colours however some still stay there so that doesn't really look right so I'm just going to turn down the center and the spread and the high and the low just so it loses a bit of saturation you don't want it to lose too much but enough so obviously, as I said, each clip's going to be different depending on what colours are there and what kind of um, lighting's in the video. So just adjust it to whatever looks good. We want to go somewhere in between black and white and colour, uh, and full colour. So the midpoint between those two usually looks really effective. So what we can do now is add some colour correction. Now, you can just go onto this by going to Colour Corrector which is under all these presets on Sony Vegas and just drag any colour you want onto it and this is adjustable anyway once you've got the settings up. Now I'm just going to drag this into the middle so I can explain a little bit about these. Now what the mid does is it, is it adjusts the colours of the mid-tones in the, in the video. High does highlights so obviously let the highlights go in yellow, the highlights will be going blue once I drag that down. And low, I don't really know what that stands for, but it's just the general colours. You don't lose the darks, which is good. So you say on mid, everything just goes that colour. Whereas on low, it's a bit more of an effective colour adjustment. So on low, if you want to create like a retro effect, then drag the little dial into like that kind of purple. As you can see, it gives that retro effect in the video, which looks really nice. If you want a kind of crime scene video or kind of like a car chase in video action, it may be kind of like thriller, then if you change down to blue on mid, that can look really effective. Um, on low as well, it will probably be just as good, but the only thing about low is it kind of flattens the image, which isn't really what we want. So yeah, you can change that on mid. If maybe it's sunny, put it up to yellows so you get those really 
bright colours and those really vivid yellows, which can look really good. And also, if you drag it down a little bit into the centre, adding those yellows can make it almost like action-adventure kind of colours, which looks really good too. If you're going for like a western and you want like a sepia, or whatever you, however you like to say it, sepia, sepia, whatever, then you want to go for like those kind of um, browns, it's got of oranges. Peter's been quite slow with his dial dragging it around. I don't know why it's like that. And any like sci fi is obviously going to be like green, greeny blue. So as long as you know the kind of colours each film's kind of like associated with, you can customise that however you like for your video. Now, anything else you want to do, you can add a sharpen if you really want to. Now, I know a lot of people like adding vignettes, and that's something I really don't like. Um, but I'll show you how to do it. On soft contrast, uh, warm vignette is the option here. Just drag it straight on to your video, and there's the vignette. As you can see, it's not the nicest thing ever. It doesn't look that good. You want to change the vignette shape to ellipse. No one wants it as a rectangle. Well, you might do, depending on what you're doing, I suppose. And you want to change the strength down. You want to turn it right down so it's not that strong on the video. And also turn the softness up so it kind of feathers a little bit with the video. So you don't, it's not really, you know, strong. No one wants it just to be like a black solid. Now what you can do is change the exterior effect to blur, which actually it actually works really quite nicely. I quite like that. If you want to go for like a dreamy kind of video effect, maybe like a maybe like a, a daydream or a kind of hallucination or whatever, then that can look quite good with that effect. So I'm just going to take that off, as I think that looks really nice. So. Thank you for watching guys, I've really appreciated you watching, remember to drop this video a like, comment, I'm going to try and do some more film stuff, now I've got time off school and I can go out and shoot and it's a bit more, I've got a lot more time on my hands to do this kind of thing, Photoshop's a lot quicker to do and when I've not got much time on my hands, so now I've got time, I'm going to get more into film, so yeah, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, please comment in the section below if you want more filmmaking tutorials as well, comment with what you think I should do a filmmaking tutorial on, I can cover most aspects of it. Obviously, don't comment with crazy CGI tutorials. I'm not a CGI professional. Thanks for watching again. Remember to subscribe. The little subscribe button's above this video. Just give that a click. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in another.